And then there's the big fat. The big F word. <laughs> right? Terry, fat can't make you fat. Fat can't can't cause insulin resistance, right? Wrong. <laughs> so again, back to your genetic blueprint and your current state of health, especially for women who have certain genetic predispositions of not being able to break down fat. If you can't break down fat, it's going to be, it's going to get locked up in your liver and potentially back in your lymph back up, and then you're going to get fluffy. Um, we're also experiencing the slow drip stress, not so much slow drip anymore. It's dripping pretty quick now in, in this world. And so I call stress the dirty cupcake. It's a fat and a sugar. It's a it's a hormone. It's a neurohormone. It's a stress hormone. It's cortisol. It's epinephrine. And so that can alone turn on viral loads, open up the tight junctions of your gut, make you fat malabsorbed, do a whole host of bad things. And so when you're trying to eat a lot of fat and you are not breaking it down, you can end up with hormone dysregulation, neurohormone dysregulation, which means your neurotransmitters and it can make you depressed, anxious, follow that line. It can make you ha have massive edema because the second role of the lymphatic channel is fat metabolism. It can feed biofilm of organisms. Mm. Okay. It can really mess up our thyroid, our, all of our hormones, because especially if we're taking exogenous hormones, that means we're on hormone therapy. We recently had an individual, we doubled their T by making their fat metabolism better. Wow. So when we are able to break down fats, we use what we have more efficiently. Okay. So we really need to understand what are my genetic vulnerabilities? Do I have a lot of fat metabolism impairment genes? That's just methylation C677T. There's a bile acid transfer gene. There's the APO gene, which also goes to Alzheimer's. It's, it's a cholesterol-based gene. It's the VDR gene that has to do with vitamin D receptor. There's, oh my gosh, the ALCAT gene, which has to do how you metabolize vitamin A. There's a whole, the FADS gene, FADS. There's the PEMT gene that has to do with how you metabolize choline. It's also fat-soluble your inability. So we need to know our genes, know your genes, know what you're putting in you that's exogenous. Are you taking a bunch of essential fatty acids? Are you taking a bunch of not just fish oil, but are you taking hormones? Are you taking estrogen as a woman? Are you taking testosterone as a woman or a man? If you can't break it down, you're making your body work super hard and it's not doing what it's supposed to do. So by taking an exogenous testosterone, if you're in the a not a good state of health, that could actually cause weight gain or fat yes. gain? Yes, absolutely. And, and it's an androgenic hormone, which has downstream impacts for more, you know, much more serious conditions. We I worked with an ER doctor. He was working night shifts. So his endocrine system was really being challenged, right? He was on testosterone. We couldn't get his testosterone up. He's now, we, we took him off of the tea in concert with his own doctor. We never tell people to get off things, but on their own, we always work collaboratively with their, their medical practitioners. We helped metabolize his fats. And again, testosterone got better without testosterone. Hmm. And he lost weight. He's looking amazing. Um, there's ways to hack this, biohack this, super biohack it, um, when you understand the, the N of one, which is you. And that's why our method is so different than anyone else's. Right. Well, the fat thing is also huge in the news and trending right now because everybody is getting off of keto. They're eating more carbs but people are now fighting over the good fat versus the bad fat, the good carbs versus the bad carbs. And I go through this on my website, learning from you um, and through my accelerated food guide. But the, the debate on linoleic acid, PUFAs versus saturated fat. Can you speak to that? Okay. So 
not all oil. It's just like everything else with me. Some things sometimes and who are you, how are you and why are you right now? Right. And so I love butter. <laughs> I love the right kind of butter from a happy cow. That's not full of estrogen. That's not full of hormones, pesticides, what else they fed them. Butter is, has butyric acid, which has been known to support the good colonic bacteria. Butter helps my brain be happy. Okay. Now, if I'm taking butter and I'm taking a hormone and I'm taking a lot of essential fatty acids and I have fat metabolism genes, then maybe that butter's not so right for me right now. And then if I pull everything else off and add the butter back in, then I'm okay. Right. So the PUFAs, the PUFAs are, they're saying, boy, that is just so bad because it's a cis fat. It's a trans fat, right? It's, it's a fat that makes the membrane brittle. So the cell membrane. So, and this is where I love body bio and their PC is amazing. I advise for them. I think they're a phenomenal company that the health of our cells have to do with the health of our cell membrane. Right. And the health of our cell membrane generally is made up of the fats that we have assimilated. That means used to our benefit over the last 90 to 120 days. So if we take a bunch of fat and we can't break it down, that's not going to help our cell membrane. That actually makes our cell membrane brittle and can lead to DNA interruption and DNA damage. And the PUFAs now, polyunsaturated fatty acids, not all of them are created equal because avocado is a polyunsaturated fatty acid, um, olive oil, right? Not all things are all bad all the time. Now, if you have a histamine response, avocado is going to kick your butt. If you're super fat malabsorbed, avocado may not be great for you. However, if you really have estrogen metabolism issues, avocado is going to help you metabolize that estrogen. It's an estrogen metabolizer. That's why it looks like a wound. That's the doctrine of signatures from an herbalist perspective. So I don't believe that seed oils are good because seed oils are, they're any thing that is roasted and cooked will convert this good fat to a bad fat. Mm. Okay. That Mercola has been harping on this for a long time. Dave Asprey is talking about it now. Many people are on the PUFO bandwagon, right? Mm -hmm. Get off of seed oils. Seed oils are horrible. Now, again, great seed may not be terrible if you have raw oil. I love my oils. The ones that I take personally is the EOV olive oil. And butter, those are what I cook with. That's it. But I will tell you, for the first time in my life, because of the LDL cholesterol through the histamine response, making me, I was fat malabsorbed for the first time in my life. And so I had to back off my nuts and my seeds, which I used to consume daily. I had to back off my butter. I had to back off my cheeses because guess what? I was getting thick around the middle. And did it. I didn't like that. I'm like, I've not changed my food supply in a while. And I've eaten into my genetic blueprint in my current state of health. But here comes the pesky little insider that disrupted my LDL that made me for the first time have elevated cholesterol and oxidated cholesterol, which I've never had. And so I had to back off my fats, even my happy fats. And when I did, and I was taking in cream in the morning, happy cream, because, you know, it's good for my brain. Well, I hit my tipping point in this new environment.